Welcome, everybody, to Season 1, Episode 1, the premiere of a brand new Atlanta Falcons Storyteller podcast. Mm-hmm. And when you start a podcast, who do you go get? Like a face of the freaking franchise. Right. <laughs> I feel like that's essential. So we brought Grady Jarrett in here. Grady, thank you so much for joining yes, us, man. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. I, I ain't know I was the first guest, man. I'm on. I, mean, yeah. I mean, it was the top of the list, and we're definitely thrilled to, to have you. And it's crazy. You, you go down the, the bio, and you're like, eighth year. Yeah. That's You've been in this business for a, a long time. A good bit. A good bit. I like, I like, I like to st- considering, you know, my goals. I could like to consider myself still young and still learning and hungry and ready to, you know, just keep stacking up the years. But it, there's a very small percentage of people in your line of work that get to that third contract. Yeah. And you've gotten there. Yes, sir. So what's the secret sauce? How Man, you, do it? you know what? I mean, I could say it's hard work. I could say it's... It's just a combination of a lot of things, man. Hard work, dedication, sacrifice, and belief, you know, that's the top one, you know. And um, just never really getting um, comfortable and always striving to get better, you know. Um, Reinvent yourself to whatever you got to do to be able to play at a high level, you know, and being self-critical, you know what I'm saying, and seeing what you can do to be better and just always learning, being coachable and being, you know, being somebody enjoy, that people enjoy being around. You know, nobody want to work with, you know, an a-hole, you know, nobody. <laughs> that's But it, it's true, man, no matter yeah. how much talent, you know, you got to be a good person too, you know, as, as hard as you work. You know, just because you're a good person, they're going to give you nothing. But if, you, if you're a good player, but you're a detriment to the team, they're not going to keep you around as well, you know. So I think me just being the best me, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, trying to help others around me has, has helped me uh, get to the point where I am now and is going to continue to help me elevate and be, be a better player. I want to go back. You, you said the word uh, reinvent yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I think is an overlooked part of the journey of, yeah. of being in this league. For you, is there something that you would, any advice or anything you would tell yourself when you are 20, 21, 22 coming mm-hmm. into the league? What is what is something you'd say to your younger younger self now knowing what you know now? You know, me talking to myself, I would just tell myself to continue to trust the process. You know, I was um, a lot of things as a young player, you know, you question and you wonder if you're doing things right and and um but but for me the biggest thing was for me to for, was to trust my process you know all advice for me wasn't good advice and just knowing that the things i was doing was right you know and at the end of the day if i had to give advice to somebody else it would be just be be your best self and let the rest take care of itself because everybody formula going to be different and you got to be confident in that you know um it's when you're not confident in yourself and knowing that you know, that you can get the job done with the things, you know, God has blessed you with and whatever got you to the point to being in the building in the first place, you're going to be searching, looking for answers. Oh, what is, I'm, I want to be like this. I want to be like this. At the end of the day, God may want you, you know, and you got to be the best version of that. You know what I'm saying? And you can't be afraid to change. And the most important thing um, as a professional uh, athlete and as a, as a person in general, you got to be willing to look in the mirror and grow, you know. Yeah. Nothing, nothing stays the same. Anything that's trying to get you to stay the same, you, you, you going, you going to die out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, that's like life, you know, it's like evolution, like evolve or die. Like it's like legit, the world changing every day. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Whether it's between, um, technology, us, you know, the athletes get better year in and year out. There's somebody getting drafted. You know what I'm saying? It's a bigger dude running faster, but so what's going to be mm-hmm. different and I can't be the same meat, you know what I'm saying? So it's like being willing to put in that extra work and ask the questions of where and, and be real with yourself and see where the things you have to get better at. And so that's been the thing that's been kind of helpful to me. It's been good for me and keeping me like always fresh. Like I told you earlier in the podcast, like just feeling like young and always willing to learn. And I'm just, I just have fun enjoying, enjoying what I do. And um, I just know it's always room to improve and change and be better. There's uh there's there are a lot of guys in this Falcons locker room who look up to you. Mm-hmm. When you were younger, who was that guy for you and what did you take from that person and why did you gravitate towards that person? Uh a big a big person for me as a young guy to watch was Jonathan Babineau. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. uh, I played with uh Babs when he was in his 12th year I think and the thing the biggest thing that took that stuck out to me was um Babs used to come in every day and uh, he had his routine down packed and I thought to myself, you know, if he can do this at 12 years, you know, whether it's taking notes every day, first in line, going to practice, going hard every day, you know what I'm saying? I just, and I think it was the um, things that made him a great pro 
for this organization and just the things that kept him around as I, I saw as a young dude and really just watching from the shadows you know because he didn't he wasn't a big vocal guy but you know he didn't have to be because everybody respected him so much and um even when you know roles started to change and whether it was you know I got to play a little more and, and he just he was just a guy that just always was pouring pouring to me but at the same time he was pouring into me not knowing just being himself you know mm-hmm. and um and then just having his support you know through my career now on just you know just it's like a you know big brother type just just you know watching for watching from the shadow you know what i'm saying like just making sure i'm doing stuff right just you know he would reach out and just tap tap in time to time but he that was somebody for me as a young dude coming in and knowing who knowing who he was you know um, was was good was good for me and uh, I think I took a lot from him just watching him as a young player. Someone else who's watching you now is your son. Mm-hmm. And what a transition! Yeah. That was, I know, that was, right? Yeah. That was on point. Yeah, right for there. sure, for it's sure. Like I get paid for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, no, no. You're so that was one of my favorite part of training camp. You know, because mm-hmm. the last couple of years we haven't yeah. seen families out here. Yeah. What was it like having him just running around, man. watching you do yeah, your thing? Like, man, it was, it was surreal. You know, I think um, just. You know, as a as a young player, over time, you know, you see people out there with kids, and um, you know, myself for for years, you know, I've I've I'm on my eighth year now, and mm-hmm. I've I've been in my relationship now for look, two two years. I'm going three years now. You know, it's been it's been good. Now my son is uh, going on one years old this Saturday. Oh, um, wow. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this Saturday before the first game, um, and. And me just being that that guy, just freelancing guy, you know, I was, you know, single dude and just, you know, I see people they found I thought it was cool. But me, you know, stepping into that next, you know, st- phase of my life has been just so cool. And and seeing him run around is just, and, you know, him running around. And, you know, I got to brag on my boy a little bit. He was an early walker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he was walking real. about <laughs> eight, seven, eight months. So but so by time, it was training camp time. He was out here running. He yeah. could do the full length football field. <laughs> Not one years old yet. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Him, he, I'll call him. I'll be like him talking to him, <laughs> meeting like a big boy, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just dad, man, and just seeing where, where, where is, um, his mom does a great job of making him little clothes and stuff oh, like yeah. that, and um, and also you know with, with my mom too, you know when she come around, it's so hard to get him from her, like, <laughs> <laughs> so you know I, I get my time in where I can with him between my mom and my girlfriend. Um, just, just you know, just, just hanging out, but, but being a dad, man, it's been the, it's been. The best thing that to happen to me, and I, I've I've um, really really enjoyed watching him um, just be a part of this journey, and excited to extend it so he can have some uh, you know some memorable some memorable moments that he can you know re- recollect you know yeah. as he as he continue to get older. So I mean, but we're gonna take it year by year and enjoy the process. So I mean, it's, it's been amazing. Yeah, it's and f- for those who haven't seen Grady's son yet, he mm-hmm. he's barely one. He looks two and a half. Yeah, and yeah. he's and he's yeah. out there running wind sprints. But like he, he lean though. <laughs> he he right. big and lean. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We I'll be messing with him. I'll be because he run around the house with us. <laughs> he run around his house in a little diaper man. Got them big quads out, and, he, and now he learning no no. So he points you, wag that finger, he be like no no no. So, so, and then he know he know no no. He know uh, you, he love to clap his hands. So we do clap the hands song, roll him up, uh-huh. like roll him up, put him in a pan. He love that, and um, so he's starting to get find his little voice right now, and um, and and just it's just. It's just amazing watching watching him watching him grow up. Oh, I love that. What are y'all doing for his first birthday? His birthday, man. So he is a big big Encanto fan. Oh, um, uh, they I like watch him it even more. Yeah, they watch like it I'm... ten times a day. <laughs> 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 That's the, what he watches on his car rides, and uh, so we gonna um, set it up at the house. Have a real nice. Um, a lot of his family is coming in to see him. I don't get to see him yeah. uh, often. Family from you know Atlanta, Alabama, Savannah. Pittsburgh. Good. Um, I mean, he got so much support from both sides of his family that they just want to be around him because they don't get to see that much of him, you yeah. know. But bet- between me, you know, me being as busy as I am, and um, and him just, you know, just being in 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 that in that you know life with me, you know, he, we so we always locked in. So um, so everybody ready to celebrate him and and, and just just do his thing. So I mean, I'm, I'm happy to be um se- getting ready to celebrate a one year old birthday at this point where they're being in the hospital <laughs> before the first game last year when he was when he was coming coming right before the Eagles game so um <laughs> so man yeah <laughs> Very yeah close. man cutting it close so so yeah so I'm in a I'm in a 
I was always in a good mental space, but yeah. it's a little more chill now that you know you're right. not you're not getting close to game day, wondering if you got to leave at halftime to go <laughs> catch, <laughs> baby, catch a baby. No, and but it's been cool. As long as you know to never talk about Bruno, then that's important. Yeah, yeah, okay, we, yeah. uh, we don't talk about Bruno. We, we don't talk about that. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get a little deep here. Yeah, because I, I talked to you last November, mm -hmm. and you, you talked a lot about building and leaving your legacy, yeah. right? And I was thinking about that, and that could mean a bunch of stuff. You have yeah, a building. Doubt in your hometown named after you. Yeah, for you sure. have a son, you mm -hmm. have a franchise that you've been with for as long as you have yeah. Yeah. in your hometown. Yep. That like that's a that's, that, legacy that's a big word for some. That's a huge word for you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And it means a lot. And uh it's something that I definitely embrace and I feel like as I as I grow and mature more, it's something that's just becoming more more important to me. You know, I don't got time for the BS. You yeah. know, I don't got time for if we're not moving forward, we're not moving in the right direction, negativity, anything in between from anybody, I don't have time for it. You know, me being um, a father, you know, I'm, I, I take pride, you know, in being, um, you know, a great son, a brother, and, and, and whatever it may be, and just being somebody that the kids can look up to from the community, from nationwide, whatever it may be, you know, I, I take my influence very seriously. And um, and the more I take it seriously, the more God continue to bless me to to spread to spread my reach, you know. And and that's something that I, you know, some things that I shot away from as a younger player and just a younger, some just body just trying to just focus, keep his head down, and and, and do what I got to do on the football field. Um, you know, learning that the impact that I have on on people has has been has been very very important. And you know, just getting the feedback from somebody, just you know being able to spend some time with me or or and something some things that you know i just thought you know i'm just kicking it you know i'm hanging yeah, I mean, out you know and i'm having interactions with people and they just make it's just they come to me two three years later or hit me up on um socials and just be like oh that just meant so much to me and maybe i didn't think about it as being you know that deep but right. And then I started to realize, like, you know, the things I say, you don't know they matter. People are always watching, you know, what I'm doing. So certain things that I um, could do um, as a, as a you know, younger, less notable player, you know, from going to the grocery store and telling, you know, and somebody recognizing me and, and st stopping and talking to them versus be like, no, nah, I don't feel like talking right now. Just that can make or break somebody's day. You know what I'm saying? If I got a time, I'm going to give it. You know what I'm saying? And people have always been, like, real respectful. But at the same time, I'm not somebody who just like shell away in the house and stay away. Cause I mean, I go, I, I, shoot, I still go to go store, you know, so, <laughs> you know, they're trying to get me to stop going, so, you know, but just, chill. <laughs> but I, I mean, just a small stuff like that. And, and I, I always try to be really approachable yep. and stuff like that. But, um, but just learning my influence and taking it seriously has, has really, really helped me and the people around me and, um, you know, people watching mm -hmm. and really, so, so we we went deep. Now mm -hmm. we're gonna come all the way back up. Yeah. We, we're gonna do something new here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a rapid fire all sort right. of a all thing. Right. I'm down with that. We right? love games. I'm down with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's yes, it's a rapid fire. We have five questions. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> all right. I'm a nervous. I know, right? Yeah. No, so it. we're gonna start off first. Um, favorite play as a Falcon in your career? Mm, favorite play as a Falcon. Um, I think. There's you know, so many. Yeah, <laughs> no, right? it's good, it's good. I think that uh, first sack I got in the Super Bowl my second year was just so surreal. Um, and I, it happened like so fast. You know, I just kind of, it's kind of just like an effort play. And yeah. we, to be honest, I don't, nobody, I don't know, but most people run, notice um, we ran, we caught a different play up front, like a doing like some games and. Uh, Brooks Reed that did something. He did he did this, like a spin or something. He really was supposed <laughs> to. I kind of just went around him and they just kept going and got the sack. And then it's just like uh, then I'm like, all right, man, it's go time. Like, <laughs> yeah, so we're that's, here. that's definitely like a something memorable, um, memorable for me. And uh, so that's probably one of my most memorable plays. Okay, what is the last movie that you saw? But it can't be in Kanto. That's out. Oh, <laughs> Takes it out. <laughs> last movie. Dude, last movie that I seen. Do TV shows count? Maybe a good TV. Sure, show? yeah, what's yeah. a good TV show? I can oh man, that. I'm on the I'm on the I'm on the uh, Game of Thrones wave now. Yeah, I, know I tweeted Beautiful. about it the other day. Yeah, but um, it was it House of Dragons? House of yeah. Dragons. Oh man, it's that's, intense. Man, that's 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 what we do. That, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the Sunday nights now. So I'm um, <laughs> gonna play that game. 
You know, I have to be finished with the Saints. You know where I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> House of Dragons. <laughs> I don't want to watch no film right now. No, no, no. <laughs> no House of Dragons play. is on. No, I'm just playing. But, yeah, so I've, I've been on the Game of Thrones the past. I got on really late, but mm. I caught all the way up, and now that's that's my go-to. Love it. I know Game of Thrones was a lot of uh, pandemic uh, yeah, watch for yeah, a lot of you people. you already know. Yeah. For you, no, you're a foodie. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite Atlanta restaurant? Favorite Atlanta restaurant? Um... No, it's not. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> um, it's a lot of good places in Atlanta, yeah. man. You know, I like, um, I love sushi, so I love going mm. to Umi. Um, oh, yeah. They, they always do such a great, great job and always treat us very well. Uh, Kima is one of the, another place that I love. Um, House Steakhouse is a, always a go-to. I like to tell people to, whenever they come from out of town, just a great all-around menu. Um, there's so many good places in Atlanta, oh, yeah. though, man. I'm a big oyster, oyster, um, Oyster Gore now, so I like, like the Optimist is another good one. I love it's another steakhouse, Marcel. Like it's been, it's been, it's, man. Atlanta got some good spots. You know, yeah. Atlanta got some good spots, and I'm still learning. It's a lot of restaurants that I haven't been, but those off the top of my head are some some of my good ones. Love that. I hope somebody's writing all that stuff down. I know. Yeah, Take yeah, notes, yeah, people. Tell Gosh. them I sent you. <laughs> <laughs> Go on a tour. Uh, who's the Falcon that you spend the most time with? Uh, oh, the, the, yeah. The Falcon I spend the most time on the team right now. Yeah. Um. Probably this off season, me and Taquan Graham, we spend mm-hmm. some good good amount of time. He's been a been a good, good dude, just a um, you know, just a good friend, you know, to add to my life, and just been a uh, guy that um, I'm not even, I'm not even in a mentor way, just something way, just uh, just you know, two common dudes just hanging out, you know, and um, we got to spend a lot of good time together this off season and uh, just chop it up, talk mess, and just hang out, and just us being able to play a lot together now with him coming into his second year, coming into his own, has been it's been good. So I mean, that's probably somebody I, I spend spend a lot of time with. Uh, uh, me and Dion has played together for you know. Um, years at this point so we our family's locked in you know so obviously that that goes without saying um so i mean it's those it's those so those are two that come off come off the top of the head and the last one last one what's your biggest pet peeve biggest pet peeve mm-hmm. oh man this is the one that we we feel like people have really strong opinions about. yeah yeah i hate slow movers yeah <laughs> and complainers mm-hmm. and just negative yeah. negativity you know mm-hmm. just just i can't stand it I, you know i'd like like literally I, like i told you earlier some stuff i'm just not going for you know <laughs> some stuff i'm just not like i, I just don't i won't i won't accept it in, in, in my home or in my space and that's that's you know and i just because when you deal with stuff and you let stuff slide is that's a slippery slope yeah. you know and i made that mistake you know so moving with some urgency like we care like we want to be here like we love what we're doing and we're happy to have some life mm-hmm. and um you know complaining and you know finding negativity i'm straight on that uh, God, no, I don't. Mm-mm, I don't like that. Don't bring that in our house. Yeah, mm, nah. no, absolutely no. Definitely that was not. freaking awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> fun. We <laughs> love it. For podcasting, Grady Jarrett, thank you yeah. so much for the time, guys. Thank you so much. Rate, re- review, subscribe, all the fun stuff that you're supposed to do, and uh, we'll have you back. Sure. Yeah. yeah, this was fun. Awesome. This is Come fun. on down. Yeah.